Good day, Minecraftians. Purple Mentat here, bringing you more Running Red. Picking up exactly where I left off last time because, as way too many of you mentioned, there is a gravestone waiting for me up there. You can see it from here. Didn't notice it my first time through, but thankfully I have such a very large and concerned fan base to tell me about it over and I'm going to get bitter again. Anyway, check the vlog if you want to know why I'm a little bit bitter about that situation. So let's go recollect that. I've got myself a whole bunch of stone so that I can make sure that it's safe because I had a lot of stuff. And a bunch of it is probably going to go exploding in all kinds of directions. And then as soon as I get that, I can continue on exactly where I left off. Tearing down... Oop. Hello. This suddenly got more difficult. Hang on. There we go. And this is a really terrible placement for the jade ladder. Let's fix that. Oh, come back. Hang on. This might take a moment. There it is. Pink. Not that I even need it there anymore as I'm about to finish tearing this whole thing down. So, anyway, if you decide to build this gravity trap on your own, and I will put up a video sometime showing just the gravity trap, don't put the jade ladder on the same side as the rope ladder, as the jade ladder sticks out a bit. You're probably going to want it on the back, would be your best bet. Alright, so I need to build myself a little platform to collect my goodies out of... Oh boy. Also, careful, apparently you can walk on gravestones. That was... Terrifying. Alright. And boom. There. I'm thinking if I give it three spaces from the gravestone in all directions, that will be enough room to make sure nothing spills. And then I can build a little wall just in case anything does. And I'm going to punch through this. I just don't trust the gravestone not to send things flying everywhere. I know it tries to drop everything directly on where you're standing. However, that is a tries kind of deal, and sometimes, well, things just don't work the way you want them to. And then you can end up with items exploding all over the place. So I'm going to build myself a nice big platform with a little bit of a wall to be kind of a little bowl for my items that are going to come popping out of my gravestone. And it's going to go one, two, three in that direction. And that's got to go. Also, you'll notice that I am spending a lot more time on stuff that I would normally do off-camera. Honestly, this is a conscious decision on my part to stop killing all of my time creating videos. I feel that I can keep the quality high by talking to you folks while I do this sort of thing without doing all of my grinding off-camera. And I can include some of that stuff so you can see the general process that I go through when I'm doing something like this. I'm very slow and methodical by nature, so that means this sort of thing can take a lot of time. Alright, so that was way overkill. You would probably be safe with going two out in any direction and not even bothering with the little wall that I had. Anyway, there's all of my things back, which is awesome. And we're going to deactivate that bound pickaxe before I accidentally kill myself or something awful like that. Still have 7,467 LP in the network. So, as long as I don't right-click this guy, it's actually fairly safe to use at the moment. If I grab my Divination Sigil, you will see that I am burning my LP, but not at such a rate that it's not worth doing. And the Blood Pickaxe moves fairly quickly and has no durability attached to it, which is awesome. Now, the big deal that I want to do is I want to get this whole thing torn down. But you'll notice that my potion flask is completely out. So what we're going to do, we're actually going to shut that bound pickaxe down. And we're going to go get our potion flask refilled. To do that, I'm going to need to make myself a couple of alchemical items. And I'm hoping I have enough blood left in the altar to, uh, left in the system to do that. Because I no longer have, well, I have a few mobs left over. So actually, I'm going to kill what I can and get it into the system. Because I'm going to need all of that. 
In any case, let me get these guys killed and drained into the orb. And that I will do off camera while I figure out exactly what materials I need to refill this potion flask. See you guys in a minute. Alrighty, so. Oh, got some extra stuff in here. Let me uh, take care of that. Missed one beat. Alright, so like most alchemy things, the filling agents begin with some simple catalysts. Um, hang on. Nap you. Toss you in here. Once you have your simple catalysts, then you need to perform... Oh, actually, I need another simple catalyst, don't I? Yep, I'm going to need two for my purposes, which means I need more glowstone. But just one more. That's enough. I don't mind zipping around at this point, because now that I've put a bunch more power into the system, well, I have 44,000 LP. Yeah. If I had only had done that in the first place, everything would be okay. So, if you take one simple catalyst, two obsidian, one sand, and one dirt, this will combine to form... Terai. Now, if I take um, another simple catalyst, which I need the sugar for, I think I'm being all, you know, good and getting myself prepared ahead of time, and I forget that the simple catalyst recipe only produces one. There we go. More or less. Maybe I shouldn't have that thing when I'm trying to right-click things. Might be better. All right. And then to turn a simple catalyst into a weak filling agent, we need that simple catalyst, some nether wart, some lowstone, and some redstone. Not in that order. There we go. Now, if you combine your terai and your weak filling agent, the weak filling agent will add two uses to a flask. If you combine your terai and your weak filling agent, you will increase that to a standard filling agent, which will add four uses to a potion flask. Or two. That's cool as well. Hmm. I don't know if that changed on me or if I'm just remembering things improperly. In any case, the standard filling agent added two more uses to our, weak, our potion flask, so that's what I really needed to be able to get up there and finish tearing this thing apart relatively safely. Now, I'm going to use up this Invar pickaxe before I go back to using the bound pickaxe. And with the use of the filling agent and the fact that I'm not going to be doing... Well, actually, hang on. I have 40,000. Which means I can afford to right-click three times without really causing myself any trouble. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine... Well, it does an 11 by 11 area, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. If I stand here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and here, should take out this whole corner. Success. Awesome. And if I do that again over here, going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, Basically, right about here. Almost. Anyway, that did a good bit of the work for me. And now I can go down in here a bit. Maybe not far enough down for them to see me and start attacking. And right-click here. Fantastic. Only 10,000 LP left, but I succeeded in clearing out most of this with three more clicks instead of half an hour of, you know, manually taking down, taking it down a block at a time. So now I'm going to commence with the half an hour of manually taking down a block at a time. I'll finish getting this cleaned up off camera between flight and this pickaxe and such and the air sigil. I'm in very little danger of any more dying. So I'll see you when it's done. All right, folks, now that I've got all of that cleaned out and gone, it's time to build a newer, better version. First thing I need is some blackout curtains, which I'm going to be using along with a whole bunch of ink sacks and, ooh, glass. And glass to make a bunch of dark glass. 
which it doesn't actually want to auto populate because it's a jerk. And this. Oh, it has to be thickened glass. Okay, so I'll work on making some thickened glass while we do some other things, but. Hmm. You are dying on that. Stop that. Alright, this ender pearl seed has got to go. I don't want my few sheep killed accidentally. So I'm going to need more blackout curtains over time. Alright, thickened glass. If you don't remember for extra utilities, it's fairly simple. Don't I have an easy way to make sand? Uh, no. I need to make it in the chemistry set. Gunpowder and cobblestone. <sighs> Fine. Let's just make a stack of it. Or two. So I don't have to do this again. That'd be good. Use a stack of gunpowder. Use a stack of cobblestone. Because I got both. In spades. Um, there. You're processing. Good. Alright, so to make your thickened glass, you need to start with regular glass and sand, and you just kind of mix the two together, like so. And you get sandy glass. And then each piece of sand still provides one piece of glass, uh, uh, one piece of thickened glass, but you have to cook it again to get that out. So there you go. Not that tough. And then to make your dark glass out of that, you take your thickened glass, your blackout curtains, and your ink sacks. And that pattern right there. I'm going to need a total of 21 of these dark glass, which I have enough ink sacks to provide for, but I don't have blackout curtains. So I'm just going to kind of give the sheep a boost in a minute here, drag them back over to some grass, maybe make a nice big grass platform and fence them in on it, just so that I can get some wool faster. All right, so let's grab what I'm going to be using other than the dark glass as the main building material here, which is, of course, the white stone brick. And we're going to build up right here for the time being, because I want to go off of there, right like that. And that's going to be the basis here. Let me show you what I'm doing here. I'm going to need a 9 by 9 platform. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Well, as you'll notice, coincidentally, actually not, I'm not sure if it's a coincidence or not, fits within the bounds of these bloodstone bricks. That's going to become important briefly. Well, not very briefly, but it's going to become important in the future. And what this platform is going to accomplish for me is this is going to be my new spawning pad. So let me get some of this put together. One, two, six, seven, eight, nine. Perfect. I thought I was at about the right spot, kind of eyeballed it, and everything worked out. Fantastic. So there's going to be a wall around this side, and I'm going to make the front of it with this dark glass, so that I can look in and see what's going on inside. That's really the whole purpose of it. Dark glass will block light as if it were a non-transparent block, but you can look through it. So it's pretty useful stuff. And because I do want to get Endermen out of this thing, I'm going to need to build this platform at least three tall, with the roof being the fourth layer. Now, eventually I will come back and I will set something up to actually collect the items out of this. Maybe I'll replace the entire floor with hoppers. Maybe I'll build myself some more elegant collection system. At the moment, though, I really just need to get power flowing again. And to do that, I need to get this platform complete. So, let me do that grinding off camera. Get the dark glass together that I need. And once I have this platform complete and I'm ready to set up the next step and I've got monsters spawning inside, I'll show you why I'm doing this. And if you know blood magic, you can probably guess already. All right. See you soon. Alrighty, folks. I have the chamber that I'm looking for mostly built. If my audio has gone really strange, I apologize. I moved my computer in between recording sessions and things might be very, very different in this room than they were in the last. So... 
couple of small additions. One, two, three, four, one, two, four. We're going to put a hopper right there. But I actually don't just want the hopper. I also want some item ducts. Do I have any of those made in this map? Uh, does not appear that I do. Tin and lead. Okay, let's go see. What have I got available? I am all out of blood in the system at this point, so I don't dare use my air sigil to get around. Because, as you can see, I am down to 42 LP. So every use of the air sigil now is half a heart. That's a problem. Alright, I probably have some... Oh, there we go. Nope, those are leadstone energy conduits, and those are fluid ducts. Not what I'm looking for. Okay. I'll just grab a couple of these, and that'll be good. And I'm going to build out a bit. Yes, I'm going to lose some... Uh, let's give up the white stone blocks. They're the ones that are most easily replaced at the moment. Odd as that may be. And they tear down really quick with this invar pickaxe. Uh, I want you like that. I want to get out underneath this thing a bit. There we go. It's actually much further than I need to be. You know what? I need to put that back so I can put the item duct right there. And that'll do for the time being. That will be just fine. And we're going to stuff a vacuum hopper underneath it. Weird? Yes, but you'll see why briefly. I'm going to right click that so I can put an item output on the top. Fantastic. Now, if I break that spot again, we're going to put a hopper down facing into that item duct. And the reason for this is actually relatively simple. If I toss an item into any one of these quarters, the vacuum hopper is going to get its hooks into it and pull it into the center, where it will enter into this hopper. At which point, I'll have that hopper set to have extracted from it by the item duct and we'll be in good shape. Which means that when monsters spawn in here and inevitably die, their drops will be collected for me, which is the point. So, close this up. If I hit F7, you can see that everything in there can be spawned upon, except the hopper, which can only be spawned upon at night. That's just fine. It'll work out great this way. So, let me grab my shovel. I do have a shovel, don't I? Guess not. All right. Let me punch down this dirt. Going to want a better way to act, uh, get up here to access things eventually, but right now, things are fine. Until I can get my system rolling and producing lots of flight potions for me all the time. Alright, so this crescent hammer will be used to set you and you. Oops. Ah, uh, right, vacuum hopper. Can't actually target around a vacuum hopper because the hitbox in this version takes up the entire block. And I want a lever here to power the thing. Ooh, but that right there, I believe, is going to end up powering the hopper, so the hopper won't output. We'll find out when we come back, though. I really wish I had a dolly, but there's no Jabba in this particular pack. As such, I'm forced to rely on... Hmm, I can't easily move this chest to the end of that item duct. Hmm, that's okay. That's a uh, problem that I will come back to in a moment. Alright, so we are going to set up the whole reason for this entire endeavor which is a Master Ritual Stone, two spaces, with two empty spaces between the Blood Altar and the stone. And we're going to use our Ritual Diviner to create the Well of Suffering. Which is just right-click a whole bunch until all of the pieces appear. 
that right? That doesn't look quite right. It's missing some bits. It might need to go up one level further than I set it up. Or that tank might have been in the way. One way to find out for certain is to use our activation crystal. There we go. Weak activation crystal. Ooh, but we don't need the weak activation crystal. Well, actually, yes, we do. The weak activation crystal is, is fine for this. You can upgrade it to a awakened activation crystal, but that should not be necessary for this one. Uh, I don't have the LP in the network to be able to activate this ritual, though. So, I'm going to spend some time um, getting some more LP into the network. And... That's going to be a simple matter of grabbing some animals out of the pen that I just created using the golden last. How did you die? Oh, there's wolves in there. That's not good. Why are there wolves in my sheep pen? Uh, wolves are spawning in my sheep pen. That is not okay. Uh, I need my air sigil. Ow. We're going to grab our golden lasso, which if you remember is made with a bit of string, bit of gold nugget, and an ender pearl. We're going to scoop up that wolf. He's going to be our first, um, volunteer. Yeah, we'll call it volunteer. Really don't want to miss the platform right now. That would probably end poorly. So, gather up a little bit more wheat so I can breed my animals. And this is going to be my emergency. Oh no, I'm all out of power. All right. Feed the sheep and feed the cows. There we go. So what are we doing with the animals? Well, we're taking them over to our altar and we're sacrificing them. Because, as you can see, there's... Uh, you are off. Good. Uh, right now, I have 42 LP. If I sacrifice this wolf, well, I'm up to 1,472. Now I'm going to need a good bit to activate this ritual, so I'm going to run back and forth, do this a few times. Once I'm ready to get the ritual going, I'll be back. See you soon. Alrighty folks, spent a whole bunch of time killing some sheep, got myself up to 68,000 LP. Now, very next thing that I need to do is make myself a couple of blocks of coal, because they are essential for upgrading my ritual diviner. That was why I was stopped on the Well of Suffering. I need to be able to place Dusk Stones. And to be able to do that, well, for one, I really would like those guys to quiet down a bit. Here, have a sound muffler. That'll uh, shut them up a bit. Temporarily, anyway. Uh, let's see. To make these into the Dusk Runes, I need to have... 2,000 LP in the altar each. And I'm not going to bother going and getting any more animals. I'm just going to use the good old... Uh, huh. I don't actually seem to have that on me. Isn't that the dagger? No, it's the knife. Yeah, I don't have the knife, uh, the sacrificial knife on hand. Fine, we'll go get one more animal. Well, actually, I'm going to need a couple more, aren't I? That's okay. Chickens will do part of the job, but not all of it. You, come here. I'm just going to get this blood altar filled up a bit so that I can finish everything off. And that put... Huh. Right, you are refilling the buffer slightly. In any case... It shouldn't take too many aminals to make this happen. Uh, let's see, I've got one, two sheep in there. Gonna let you in on a little bit of what I've been doing to make this whole thing function. It's not exactly glamorous work, but does get the job done eventually. Lots of bone mealing wheat. There we go. Up to four now. Make a new cow. Make a new sheep. And then turn both into LP. 
slow going, a little bit of a time, but safe. And I like safe. There's been a distinct lack of safe in this series lately. Why are you... really? It's only supposed to be able to hold a thousand in the buffer, and it's still draining. Alright. In any case, once I have the 4,000 LP in the table that I need, see you in a moment. There we go. Ended up going and grabbing the sacrificial knife for the last little bit after all. Up to 4,000 LP, so I'm going to toss my two blocks of coal into the hopper, get those turned into the dust runes that I need. And we're going to set up our recipe here with the Ritual Diviner in the center, Two demonic slates on the sides, which required a whole bunch of LP and a whole bunch of time, but not much else. And our two elemental inscription tool, Dusk. And there we go. Can place Dusk Ruins. And then we need to cycle this thing back through to the ritual, or the Well of Suffering. There we go. There we are. That's what was slowing me down, the Dusk Ruins on the sides there. All right, so just continue doing this until it stops animating and creating particles. There we go. That's everything. Now, as you can see, there is 68,000 LP in the network. We're going to activate this ritual. You get some particle effects on top, and it eats up 50,000 LP. And as you can hear, everything in that room is dying now. And as you can see, the altar is filling up relatively quickly. Pretty happy with that. So now I have automated power generation. Now you might be wondering why I have it set up exactly like this. Well, that is going to be a story for next episode, as I'm going to get myself a couple of things together in between episodes. For right now, let's take a look at where we were on the quests and see if we can't complete something today. Uh, oh yeah, these are just the repeatable quests for lots of life essence. Let's get our... Oh, where'd you go? Portable tank? Portable tank. Let's get you back down. Set you to start outputting more. As you can see, I've already mostly refilled from the ritual. I'm up about 13,000. Yeah, so I got a ways to go on that. In any case, I'm going to need to be a little ways away from things for those to spawn. Boy, they really don't like fences. Did you stop dying in the fence? I guess not. Huh. wonder what that's about. Clearly I'm going to need to get a better holding pen set up for them so that they stop accidentally suffocating themselves. Come over here. Okay. Should be able to see some monsters spawning in there. Should actually be able to see the LP going up. Yeah, as you can see, I've already gained another 600, just kind of passively. And this won't run super fast at the moment, largely because I'm spending a lot of time very close to this. Remember, mobs will not spawn within 23 blocks of you. So, what I want to do is make sure that I, uh, this is at 2297. Yeah, if I'm over here, most of that area can spawn. And if I get over here near my Ritual of Binding, all of that area should be able to spawn. And as you can see from the map, uh, if I change the overlay to Loaded Chunks, yeah, I'm keeping everything here in uh, loaded up in memory. So, that's not a problem at all. And yeah, I now have AFK power, which is fantastic, I think. Let's go check our... Po our, our portable tank and see how much we have in there. About 5,000. And for each of these, need 4,000? Yeah. Covered in ash gets its gunpowder. I really don't care about those quests, so let's get on with Vampires Won't Hurt You. That's right, the next step on this was Mutandus, which I kind of abandoned a while ago after a bit of an annoyance as I started setting up to make it the traditional way. Well, that's completely unnecessary in this pack. Mutandus can be simply uh, created in the Blood Altar for 3,000 LP with regular old bone meal. So let's get some of that going. Just going to wait for some, power, uh, some blood to show up in the altar. 
We'll move over here while that happens. And don't worry, we're going to upgrade that altar even further so that it's not as much of a problem if I happen to be nearby. Back in a moment. So, two things. Built myself a little observation platform. Well, observation block. It's definitely not much of a platform. Uh, I need to put some light on it before monsters start spawning over here. Secondly, part of the issue is definitely the fence because the babies are getting hurt and babies don't get hurt by the well of suffering from what I understand. Could be wrong on that. Double check. Uh, eh, but definitely I think that last corner is just within range. The well of suffering actually has a relatively large range. In any case, we've got a fair bit of blood in the altar now. So we're going to throw in, oh, uh, it's 10,000 blood in the altar and Mutandus takes how much each? 3,000. So we're going to throw three bone meal into there and get that turned into Mutandus. And that'll take a little bit. It's getting slowed down by some of the monsters still ticking. As you can see, we're up to 5,500 in the portable tank. Give this just a moment. I wonder what's next on the Vampires Won't Hurt You line. Drowning Lessons, still nothing unlocked. I'm going to have to look up how to unlock those. Because I'd really like to cover everything. And I'm sure someone knows by now. I've been taking my sweet time getting through this pack, huh? Poof. Alright. So, let's detect that mutandus. Oh, well. Uh... I don't have enough inventory space for that. Let us make some room. First off, my tools can go in there. Don't know if I'll be using much of the Dagger of Sacrifice moving forward, but good to own it nonetheless. All right, we'll take the right-hand reward bag. Eight more golden apples, another half of a heart. Yay, that gives me a full heart and brings me to 10 lives. Fantastic. Not going to be losing anytime soon. And I got four more florbs full of life essence. Should really use those because I've got eight buckets worth. They're just a bit of a pain to turn back into something useful. Leather, feathers, eggs, ink sacks, all kinds of random junk in that chest. Okay. What's next on the list? The Altar of Sacrifice. You want me to make six altars. The witches. They also appear to be using a different sort of altar. It stores life, but not the same kind as yours. Maybe if they see you using the same altar as them, they'll talk to you. Okay, well, let's make a uh, look up how to make those altars. These being the witchery altars. And they have to be created with stone bricks, rowan wood, water bottle, Breath of the Goddess, and ex Exhale of the Horned One. Well, we knew we needed the Mutandus to get Rowan Wood. To make a Rowan Sapling... Hmm... Is it a simple case of putting the Mutandus in the world? I believe I... Didn't I make myself the book for Witchery and put it on this shelf right here? Collecting Fumes. That is not the Witchery book I need. So let's look up which witchcraft book we can make now. Distilling, circle magic, bruise and infusions. Maybe herbology would be a good one to make. Symbology, conjuration, and fetishes. So we need roses, flowers, ink sacs, and feathers. Well, roses and flowers are going to be the difficult part, aren't they? I have the feather and the ink sac already. Ink sac, uh, feather. Oh, and I have both the rose and the flower. Fantastic. So, one book, one feather, one ink sac, one rose, and one flower creates Witchcraft Herbology. And in Witchcraft Herbology, we can find many common plants being used for brews. Belladonna, Ember Moss, Glintweed, Mandrake, Snowbell, Spanish Moss, Wild Bramble, Ender Bramble. That's neat. Mutate this plant from sugarcane and Spanish moss. Spanish moss is made with mutating this plant from another plant with mutandus. Neat. Void brambles, grasper, critter snare. Huh. Alder sampling. Okay. 
mutate the sampling from another plant with mutandus. Well, that doesn't get us a Rowan sampling. Mutate the plant, mutate the sampling from another plant with mutandus. Simple enough. Let's grab our oak saplings and try those first. Figured as much, but wanted confirmation. Yep, that is now a Rowan sapling. Fantastic. Oh, and that turned into glintweed. What does glintweed do for me? Emits an unearthly glow that illuminates its surroundings. Can live anywhere, but spreads only on grass, dirt, and sand. Neat. Well, let's definitely pick that up. I have magical plant torches now. That's that's just fun. So it looks like the mutantus will uh, mutandus will turn plants into random other plants. However, the important part here is that we have our rowan sapling, and we've got a crook. So there we go. Plenty of rowan weaves, bit of rowan wood. Let's get ourselves some more rowan saplings. Maybe. There we go. Fantastic. Gonna make myself another crook here. Awesome. Now we have rowan wood production. So I'm able to more than replace my saplings per tree. So let's look at the other parts necessary for the altar. As we now have plenty of the rowan wood, we need Breath of the Goddess, which looks like birch saplings in a witch's oven. And we need Exhale of the Horned One, which is oak saplings in a witch's oven. Okay, well I have, should have plenty of both of those saplings already. Uh, actually, I'm very low on birch saplings. Let's fix that. So I'm going to need two of each. Come on. One, two. Three. Awesome. And I will grab my oak saplings. I have two clay jars in the witch's oven at this time. I don't know if I have any... I have two hint of rebirths. I'm going to make myself another chest just to hang out next to the witch's oven and collect things in. Someday I may actually, you know, implement some form of organization over here, but don't bet on it anytime soon. <laughs> so I'm going to need some more clay jars. Ooh, I actually only got one Breath of the Goddess out of that. It's apparently not a guarantee. Just checking on collecting fumes. may release the gaseous essence of the tree. All right, then. So yeah, we can get that stowed, and we can look up how we make more clay jars. Uh, we've got a bit of clay somewhere, I'm sure, and I know that I have plenty of it stashed. Uh, it's plenty uh, of the ability to make more in my cyclic assembler here. Uh, ten clay. That'll do. Hmm. I'm going to want more clay. Thank you. I need a total of 24 if I want to have a nice even amount. That'll do. Wow. New mouse. Very inaccurate yet. There we are. 24 clay jars. So we're going to take our wood ash and our wool of bat out of here. There it is. Any other witchery items in this chest? No. All right. We'll keep those over here. In the meantime, let's get you cooking. Stow you. And keep working on this birch sapling situation. Something tells me I'm going to want to set up to kind of mass produce the various breaths and reeks and fumes and such. 
but as I frequently say, that's a project for another day. And give me clay jars. Awesome. I do enjoy that I can power my witch's oven from my uh, essence network. Speaking of which... Should really be storing all of my extra essence that I'm generating while I'm not directly here. Huh. It's actually doing a relatively poor job of providing materials, and I believe that is entirely because the hopper is unable to pick things up while this is active. Yep. Okay. As I thought. Okay. So we're going to break that lever. And fix this situation. Simple case of getting the right block in the right spot. I think I'm just going to stick another white stone brick there and put the lever on the edge of it. And now the hopper is happily picking things up and sending them through the item ducts. Which means our items are showing up here. Excellent. Seeds, creeper plant seeds, gunpowder, arrows, rotten flesh, a zombie brain, ender pearl, fantastical. All right, did we get our other? No, we did not. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna spend some time getting this birch wood, birch sapling situation handled. And I'll be back once I have everything I need to make the altars. See you soon, folks. There are definitely some things about this tree that I don't quite understand yet. For example, I got rowan berries breaking down the leaves, which don't seem to have a recipe or a use. And when I broke one of the logs, a bit of a music note played and a whole bunch of particles came out. But that's what I get learning witchery live as I go through this particular pack. And that's kind of part of, part of the point. Makes things exciting. All right, what did I need for those altars again? I believe stone bricks, as I have my exhale of the horned one and my breath of the goddess at this point. Yes, I need regular old vanilla stone bricks, eight of them in total, to be able to make the two sets of altars and progress the quest line. So let's grab uh, some stone. There we go. And our Rowan Wood, our Exhale of the Horned One, our Breath of the Goddess, and where are my bottles? Do I have any bottles on this map? Let's find out. If I do, they'd be down here. I do not appear to. All right, well, that's a simple solution of making up some more glass. And, oh, you know what? I think I turned all of my sand and glass into thick glass. I don't actually think I have any bottles left whatsoever. Well, bullocks. Okay, so I'm going to make myself some more sand. Right here. Uh, let's grab my Master Blood Orb. Ooh, sorry about that. That was my T-board notification going off. Apparently I got a follow in the middle of the day when I'm not streaming. Hmm. I never thought to turn it off or mute it this time, but, uh, well... Maybe next time. I can remember these things, I promise. And there's our gunpowder. Going through the motions, getting all the things together. Gunpowder, cobblestone, blood orb, chemistry set, makes sand. And I need three of it to make some. There we go. Bottles. And I don't... Hmm. Right, you are all out of power. Alright, deal with that another time. Need to get a proper power system going, but that's part of what I've been working up towards now that I can passively generate LP while I'm not directly paying attention. Another rowing sapling, sapling down. It's for the best. Okay, just need to wait for some sand to show... Uh, some glass to show up. In fact, I can wait in this interface. As soon as it appears, apply it to the crafting table, create myself bottles. 
won't be but a moment. And then from here, it'll probably be about time to wrap up. We seem to be running low on time, I would imagine. There we go. Three altars. Six altars. Fantastic. All right, is this a multi-step quest? Yes, it is. Uh, I wanted shears, flowers, and rows. Well... I already created those, just doing random other stuff. That's two reward bags, a greater and an epic. Let's find out what I get from those. But you know what? Let's go somewhere where I have a little bit more room. So I don't lose things off the side. Get our witchery books put back on the shelf. Got a rowan sapling planted. So let's cook up the other ten and get myself some more breaths of whatever. Sure, I'm gonna need some of uh, whatever Rowan cooks into at some point. One roar bag gets a little bit of everything as far as monster drops go. We'll go put those in the monster chest. Up to 300 pearls in there, which is pretty fantastic. Ooh, it also gave me some uh, some more wool of bat, which is very nice. From what I understand, hunting bats for their wool is one of the most annoying parts of witchery. And in the epic bag, we find one blood dynamo and 16 more florbs. That's actually pretty useful. Once I start doing power, not needing to build another blood dynamo, well, that's definitely to my advantage. Next quest in the book is Ritually. The witches still won't talk to you. They've taken more notice, but still nothing. Maybe you should take your time to work on other things, like harnessing the power of your life. Master Ritual Sown... And I need to make one more of each elemental inscription tool because it doesn't seem to have detected them the first time around. That's okay. The annoying one is the elemental inscription tool air, which I have created. Okay, so that's what we'll be working on next time. Thank you very much for joining me. Hope you've enjoyed this episode, and I will see you next time.